Hey everybody, um, welcome to a new video. Uh, this is going to be the start of a new series in which I review songs that I think um, have a lot of merit and that I personally really enjoy. I'll be talking about um, why I like them musically, why I think the lyrics are interesting, um, and just that general sort of thing. Um, so today's topic is going to be the song Guacamole by Good Fight. Um, it's not very well known, I don't think. Um, they're a very good band. Um, it is from the album Florida Room, uh, and I discovered this song in January of 2019. I believe a truck just drove by that might have made a fair amount of noise, but I'm going to keep rolling. Um, but yeah, it's a great song. I will only be playing uh, sections of the song in this video. I will not be playing the whole song because I highly recommend that you go check out the song and listen to it in its actuality from Good Fight themselves. I will link their band camp in the description. You guys are great. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll only be playing sections. So just to jump straight into it right now. Firstly, uh, this song has a very nostalgic feeling for me, even though I only discovered it around a year ago. Um, the reason being, um, it has two main motifs in it that are drawn from other sources that happen to be sources that I associate with my younger years and with childhood and with stuff that I really like. The first one being that the chorus uses the theme um, of the Great Fairy Fountain from the Legend of Zelda games. Um, this is a theme that has been present in the games for their, like from almost the beginning. Um, right here, I'm gonna play you a little clip from one of the first Zelda games that uses it. And now here's a clip uh, from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a very recent Zelda game, which also uses the same theme. It's very um, good. <laughs> uh, just uh, I, I just really like it. It has a, it evokes a feeling of nostalgia. It's been used for many, many years. So um, it achieves that by virtue of um, growing up with it, and you hear it in Twilight Princess, a game that I associate of getting my tonsils out when I was in kindergarten. Um, you associate that with, uh, like, uh, Skyward Sword, that's a good one. You associate it with uh, Ocarina of Time, anything. Like, um, it's it's kind of a reoccurring Zelda theme, like, next to the da 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 uh, But, um, yeah, so um, they utilize that in terms of uh, using it in the chorus. Um, which is really cool, and it's a nice subtle nod. They're not like, uh, now we're going to use uh, the Legend of Zelda Great Fairy Fountain theme. Uh, they just sort of like throw it in there, and for people who know what it is, they're like, oh, that's an awesome like reference. And for people who don't know what it is, they're like, hey, that's a nice melody. Um, and the second theme they use uh, actually only appears in the second half of the song. Something I should mention here. Um, the song is split into sort of two sections. Uh, the beginning section has all the lyrics and then there's like a minute or two break of almost silence and then the drums start to come in and it gets us with the second section which begins with a theme and then vamps on that theme the whole time and this specific theme that it chooses um is the leaving hogwarts theme from harry potter uh which is also a really cool thing i like i i when I heard it the first time, I was like, I know that, I know that. And then I, I kept I kept listening and like searching through the Harry Potter soundtrack and I found it. And it was, I was so happy when I found it. And Harry Potter for me is like a huge nostalgia trip. I still listen to all the audiobooks right now. I can pull up on my phone, my Audible account. This is not a sponsor. <laughs> and uh, you can see right here, I'm listening to uh, Harry Potter number seven right now, but um, 
okay, well, actually, this isn't a good exhibition, but, like, there's number three. I, I listen to them a lot. <laughs> I, I love Jim Dale. I love Harry Potter. I love the books. I love the movies in their own merit. Um, I think that they're slightly different than the books, but they still do a great job overall. And this theme is used in Harry Potter, the first movie. I'll play it right here. And then it's used in actually um, some of the later movies too. It's 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 a, once again a reoccurring theme of something that I know from my childhood, and so that's what makes this song really unique for me. Um, it just evokes all these feelings of, like, mystery and, and childhood, and it's just really cool. But um, one of the things I'd like to note is that it doesn't just, like, copy these themes. It doesn't, like, sample them, if you will. Um, it builds upon them. It changes them. Uh, for one thing, um, it's got, like, this really nice bass line. The do 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 I don't know if I'm in key. Um, but um, it's got... And it, that's something that neither of those songs have. They're both... Great Fairy Fountain has, like, a da do 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 like, vibe to it. And, like, Leaving Hogwarts, it's, like, a do 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 It's, like, very slow. But this, like, incorporates them both uh, into this, like, do 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 It's really nice. Um, also, both um, of the melodies are in the same key in guacamole it like it, it has a nice connectedness to it and they have the same instrumentation um though of course the second half with leaving hogwarts is slightly slower another this one this might seem a little nitpicky but um in this uh potential i, I hope this to be a series where i dive into songs that i like um it i, I i'm gonna like nitpick stuff um it's kind of cool the the um the da 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 in Great Fairy Fountain theme, it uh, it like that's that's like the melody, and then it's got this like under part right here. Whereas in in Guacamole, you have the voices singing maybe, and then the instrumentation goes da da maybe lady ba ba. It's got like a nice like counterplay to it, um, rather than the melody just being a da 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 da. Um, it's really cool. Additionally, um, in the Leaving Hogwarts theme, uh, it, like, chooses different chords as it continues on um, in the original. Um, for instance, the first section sounds like this. And then the second section sounds like this. In Guacamole, it constantly has the uh, major seven chord in which um, it's got this feeling of like uh, we're, we're driving us up into the the main root again, which in this case is F sharp major. Um, and we're driving like like it's got this like, oh, we're kind of unbalanced. Oh, but we're in. And um, it does that over and over. And that works as it keeps doing that and it keeps vamping. Um, hello, motorcycle. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I really like the vamping, too on the topic of the vamping. Um, at the beginning, uh, you just get these drums coming in. And then um, it, it starts to it starts to build. It's got like a, a nice vibe to it. And then by the end, it is like insane. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Um, Yeah, um, that's that's what I think I like about it musically. Mainly the motifs, um, the way they they like work with them, make them their own. Um, the fact that it's a it's it's a nod to it. They're not like, um, hey, here's the song Guacamole, in which we utilize leaving Hogwarts and the Great Fairy Fountain theme. Like they never they never say that. You just like if you know the themes, you can hear it. It's like a little in joke. It's really cool. 
Um, and granted, I haven't done like a ton of research about this song, so maybe they put it out there somewhere. I don't know. Good fight. I like you. Now to uh, move on to um, lyrical analysis. Uh, this isn't my strong suit. Uh, I'm going to pull up a little thing that I have uh, of the lyrics. Um, this isn't my strong suit. Um, I just said that. Repeating myself. <laughs> um, I always tend to hear the music first when I hear music. <laughs> And what I mean by that is I, I pay attention to the instrumentation and uh, the way that the chord progression goes and stuff like that rather than uh, necessarily the lyrics. But lyrics still stand out to me. Um, and so I'm going to do my best to delve into uh, the lyrics of this song. <laughs> um, so the first half, like I said, has all the lyrics. Uh, it's the part with the Great Fairy Fountain theme. Um, and ba the basically, it's... Um, it's it's like full of these like don't like don't tell me what to do don't tell me these things that I'm supposed to be evidently the guy he's a guy um, or a girl I don't know if it's a guy or a girl it's a guy that sings at the start and then a girl's voice comes in so I guess I assumed it was a guy but um he uh, he's saying like they're in a relationship it, it's it's clear and he's saying like don't don't try to control me I'm my own person don't tell me the names of the songs I should listen to uh, stuff like that. Um, and then the hook, uh, comes in with this, um, I won't fall for that trap. Um, wow, I'm jumping all into different keys there. Um, and, uh, it, it seems clear that he views his relationship with this girl as a trap and, um, as not what it seems, if you will. The chorus says, like, um, maybe lady, like, um, you may amaze me, like, it's just, it's just very, um, they say like mashed potatoes and gravy. And obviously these are all just my interpretations of the lyrics, but I see that as like, um, these people are together and everything about it should be going right, but it's not going right. It should work together like mashed potatoes and gravy, but like something tells him maybe this isn't working. Then we get into the second verse. Um, and it's a sort of extended metaphor <laughs> of Arlene, the avocado, um, tying it back into the name guacamole of the song, uh, name of the song, Guacamole. <laughs> it, it, they, they tell the story of Arlene the Avocado who runs away from El Dorado and it's like nice and it rhymes, but it seems to represent to me uh, like this story of, um, this story that these two lovers tell to themselves. Like we, we like ran away together. Um, and in the song it's like on a sunny May and they're eating their guacamole and it's evidently a happy memory and they've run away together. And it seems to be this ideal, idealistic, um, view of their relationship of like us against the world um, sort of which this this singing about this in the second verse seems to spark the guy's attraction to her that he can't seem to fully understand because remember he has he has lots of qualms if you will about this relationship but he he still there's something that's keeping him in it obviously and um, the second the second hook slash chorus says that in the first hook he's saying like um uh like i won't fall for that trap and in the second hook he says um i might fall for that trap and then he says singing maybe maybe lady um is tomorrow's wrapping paper <laughs> uh, may amaze me stuff like that um and it seems to be that like he's by the end of the song decided to accept his role in this not altogether healthy but for some reason they are together relationship if that makes sense i don't know that's my lyrical analysis no idea if that's correct i'm just trying to delve into it i highly recommend you guys check out the song um you can go find them on spotify that's where i first heard the song from my uh friend riley barreton shout out to riley um and his band uh friday limelight so um that that wraps up my analysis of this song as a whole and I will hope to see you guys in my next video. I really enjoyed making this. Um, I like to delve into songs. Um, I've used the word delve a lot in this video. And yeah, I will see you all next time. I hit my hand on the table. Peace out.